Welcome to this presentation. Thank you for the invitation to speak about protein metabolism and protected protein. My name is Sophie Parker Norman and I am head of research and development in the animal nutrition business of Volac International with its head office based in the UK. In this presentation, I am going to start by talking generally about protein and dairy nutrition. I will then talk about bypass protein, and then we will focus specifically on the product Megapro. Okay, so let's start by talking about protein in dairy nutrition. Protein is essential to every aspect of the body, including for maintenance, reproduction and milk production. Proteins are complex molecules that play many critical roles in the body and are particularly important for structure and function and regulation of the body's tissues and organs. When a feed particle enters the rumen, approximately 70 to 80% of the rumen microbes will attach to that feed particle. And of that 70 to 80%, 30 to 50% have proteolytic activity. And this is the ability to break down protein. Historically, we formulated ruminant rations based on crude protein. However, the rumen is a very complex microbial system and the ruminant doesn't simply ingest crude prote protein and utilize all of it. The protein metabolism in ruminants is more complicated than that. So just to demonstrate this point that ruminant protein metabolism is more complex than just considering crude protein percentage, I've plotted here some real diets with their crude protein percentage on the x-axis and the milk yield response of those herds on the y-axis and as you can see there's absolutely no relationship between crude protein percentage of the diet and the milk yield response so we really need to think beyond crude protein when formulating diets and indeed that is what the industry has done we have moved towards rumen degradable and bypass protein and also formulating for amino acid requirements as well. The majority of the protein supplied to the cow comes in the form of microbial protein. At a minimum, it would be about 50%, but it can be as high as 70%. And the next largest chunk is the bypass protein. And this is the protein that is protected from the rumen. It's not broken down in the rumen, so it bypasses the rumen and is absorbed in the abomasum and small intestine. The remainder is a very small portion, and that is the endogenous protein, which is basically slothed off cells from the digestive tract. But the two important forms of protein are the microbial protein and the bypass protein. And in total, these sources of protein make up the metabolizable protein, which is the protein available for metabolic use by the animal. So let's take a closer look at protein metabolism in the rumen. If we start with dietary crude protein, this can be broken down into rumen degradable protein and bypass protein. The rumen degradable protein can then be broken down into slowly degradable protein and quickly degradable protein. And the ERDP, which is the effective rumen degradable protein, is the dietary protein supply that can be used by the microbes. They can use 100% of the slowly degradable protein and 80% of the quickly degradable protein. They turn this into microbial crude protein, which is then turned into microbial true protein, which is without non-protein nitrogen. And only about 85% of that microbial true protein is digestible microbial true protein. And this is passed into the hindgut and absorbed in the small intestine and contributes to the metabolizable protein that is the protein that is utilized by the cow. 
Now, some proteins are protected, and this is the bypass protein, which cannot be broken down in the rumen. And this bypass protein, the digestible bypass protein, also contributes to the metabolizable protein, which is the total protein that is available for the cow to absorb and use. And I want to talk some more about the process of taking the rumen degradable protein and turning it into microbial protein, which is then passed to the hindgut and absorbed by the cow. And remember the ERDP is the rumen degradable protein that can be used by the microbes. It's 100% of the slowly degradable protein and about 80% of the quickly degradable protein. But this process of synthesizing microbial protein is a biological process that the microbes have to perform. They do it because bacteria have a protein requirement. Bacteria are living, so they need protein. But as well as protein, they also have an energy requirement. In fact, the microbial protein synthesis is dependent on the amount of fermentable energy supply to the microbes in the rumen. And it's also dependent, obviously, on the amount of protein supply to the microbes. And as well as that, um, the speed of flow through, through the rumen also has an impact. So if it's too fast, then the microbes won't have enough time to do the job well. So microbial protein synthesis requires energy, um, but it's not always easy to get the protein and energy balanced in a diet. If you do not supply the rumen microbes with enough energy, then they will not be able to maximize microbial protein synthesis and there will be wasted protein. But the nitrogen in that protein has to go somewhere. So it is converted to ammonia and excreted in urine in the form of urea. And this is bad because it's wasted protein, which is a cost in the diet, but it is also excreted nitrogen, which is bad for the environment. Protein efficiency of dairy diets can be as low as 16%, and that's really low. It means that only 16% of the protein that was fed to the cow is actually being turned into milk or meat. The rest is wasted. But in the best diets, it can be up to 45%. And it depends on how well the fermentable energy and rumen degradable protein is balanced. But typically, it would be in the region of 16 to 36%, with the more grass-based diets having a lower protein efficiency. There are a number of challenges when it comes to protein supply to dairy cattle. High yielding dairy cattle have a large protein requirement. Ingredient availability and forage source can impact on the balancing of rations for energy and protein. But there are ways to improve protein efficiency in dairy cattle. The two main ways of doing this include balancing the diet for fermentable energy and rumen degradable protein and also increasing a bypass protein to meet the metabolizable protein requirement. Okay, so for the rest of this presentation, we are going to consider bypass protein and specifically the product Megapro. Megapro is a combination of protected fat and protected protein, thereby increasing the energy intake of the cow without negative effect on rumen function and also providing high levels of bypass protein. In Megapro, the protected fat is supplied using the Megalac technology and we use a specialised process technology to provide protected protein from rapeseed meal. And these are the composition details of Megapro. It has a higher ME than most other protected protein supplements, so it's a great source of both energy and protected protein. And the three products on this graph are from rapeseed. So if we start with regular rapeseed meal, you can see that we have a bypass protein level of 8.9%. Rape expeller 
is protected with heat treatment and has a, a bypass protein level of 11.3%, which is a bit of an improvement on the regular unprotected rapeseed meal. And Megapro is 16.1% bypass. So it has a good protection of protein, almost twice the amount of re regular rapeseed meal, unprotected meal. So with bypass protein, it's important that they are well protected from the rumen proteolytic activity. But it's also important that they are digestible in the hindgut. And these results were carried out at the National Animal Science Institute in Denmark, um, show that Megapro is highly digestible, with the dry matter digestibility being 80 six percent digestible and the nitrogen or protein being 70 cent 77 percent digested there are a number of different options to use for feeding protein meals in dairy diets soya and rapeseed are obvious options but we also have fish meal as well and if we look at the amino acid profile of milk it has a lysine to methionine, re methionine ratio of approximately three to one. And when we feed protein, we are looking to supply a similar ratio to that found in milk. Rumen bacteria have a broadly similar amino acid profile and are also a good source of protein for milk production. And looking now at the feed ingredients, Fish meal has a favourable amino acid profile at 2.96, very close to 3. However, soya, although it has a really high level of bypass protein, it has more of an unbalanced amino acid profile compared to that of milk. It's low in methionine and as a result has a higher ratio of lysine to methionine at 4.64 to 1, which is quite different from the ratio found in milk and when we look at megapro the amino acid profile is ideally matched to that of the milk protein with the lysine methionine ratio of three to one as required and as well as this we have also done some work at cambridge university in the uk where we examined the availability of the amino acids in megapro and we found that in most cases, the essential amino acids were absorbed um, at close to 100% efficiency. And in some protected protein products, um, the manufacturing process used to protect those products can have a negative impact on the availability of protein, particularly due to heat damage. So we were pleased to see that the availability of these amino acids for digestion by the animal was close to 100% in most cases. When we feed a protected fat supplement, this energy is not available in the rumen. It is bypass fat, so it's not fermentable energy. And the microbial protein may be reduced because of this. And therefore, it's important that additional bypass protein is fed along with the protected fat to balance the supply of energy and protein. The recommendations for this from Penn State University in the US are that 14.1 grams of bypass should be fed per megajoule of metabolizable energy from fat supplied above 3% in the diet. So that's about 50 grams of bypass protein per 100 grams of fat. Okay, so I'm now going to present some trial work that we have done with our product Megapro. We did a piece of work at Nottingham University in the UK. Cows were fed eight kilograms of concentrates and you can see the composition here. At the start of the trial, groups were balanced for milk yield and live weight. And the feeding period was from the third week of lactation through to the 12th week of lactation. And we had two groups. We had a control diet and a treatment diet that contained Megapro. 
And this work was done a number of years ago, so the milk yields are lower than what we would work with today. However, the cows that fed Megapro produced nearly two and a half litres per day more milk than cows offered the control diet. And the milk protein was maintained at similar levels despite the increase in milk yield with minor effects on the milk fat percentage. However, there was a significant increase in the daily yield of protein and fat. So just to summarize this presentation, protein is an essential nutrient in dairy rations. However, protein efficiency is not always optimal. There are challenges to protein supply, including meeting the requirements of these high yielding cows and ingredient quality and availability also um, present as challenges to protein supply in some cases. Feeding protected protein is a way to meet protein requirements. And rapeseed is a good choice to do this because it has a lysine to methionine ratio that is very similar to milk protein at around three to one. And Megapro is a good source of protected fat and protein, which can be used to meet requirements in dairy cattle. So thank you for your attention. If you would like to send some questions, we would be very pleased to answer them.